Imagine your story. A reading and adventure camp. Today's camp is brought to you by Think TV, the Dayton Metro Library, and PBS Kids. Hi campers, it's Shaveen. Are you ready for another fun day? Hi everyone, it's Riley. Today we're gonna be learning about planes and trains and going places. Hey there, it's JT. I'm gonna take you to the library to read a book about a pretty crazy airplane ride. Hi, it's Kelsey. And since today is about planes and trains, I'm gonna take you on a virtual field trip to the Carolyn Historical Park. The four of us are gonna be your counselors for this week. We are still staying safe at home, but we do have a lot of fun things planned. Since this is a reading and adventure camp, we're going to be starting off at the Dayton Metro Library. JT, tell us what you have for today. We're going to see my favorite librarian, Miss Winnie. In fact, she's waiting there right now to talk to us. Hi, Miss Winnie. Hey, friends! Welcome back to the Dayton Metro Library's main branch. Boy, I'm having lots of fun with you all. Today, I'm standing under the Imagination Bridge, a bridge that will connect you to the world. I hear you going on another field trip. Have fun, I'll see you later with another story. Bye-bye. Okay, it's time for our field trip. Have you ever been to the Carolyn Historical Park? It's a wonderful outdoor history museum with lots of buildings such as a one-room schoolhouse and other buildings with a bunch of Dayton history. And they even have an old-fashioned merry-go-round that you can ride on. But today is about planes and trains, so we're going to check out some of their other amazing exhibits. Are you ready? Sky Drone is going to help us fly to the museum. And here we go. Doesn't the library look beautiful? Hang on. Wow, this is fast. Here we are. There's Carolyn Park. We're gonna land just outside of it and then go in. Will we get to see anything about the Wright brothers today and how they invented the airplane? We sure will, but we're mostly gonna see some really cool trains. In fact, the head of Carolyn Historical Park and Dayton History are going to show us around. Hello, welcome to Carolyn Historical Park. I'm Brady Kress, President and CEO here at the park, and we want to show you the 1905 Wright Flyer 3. It's right here behind me, and you can see it's pretty impressive. Uh, it is here in Wright Hall as part of the John W. Barry Sr. Wright Brothers National Museum here at Carolina Historical Park. It is a, uh, a pretty impressive airplane. It is the uh, only airplane designated a National Historic Landmark. And this is the actual plane that flew around Huffman Prairie and really was the end of uh, uh, the Wright Brothers kind of initial research and development. It was with this plane that they, they really perfected uh, flight. But speaking of transportation, uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time here with the, the Wright Flyer 3. We're going to head to our James F. Dickey Family Transportation Center and talk about some trains in our collection, some, uh, some, some rail transportation. So we'll see you there. Welcome to the James F. Dickey Family Transportation Center here at Carillon Park. And there is a, a lot to see here, so let's get started. I wanted to start right inside the front door with this. This is the 1835 uh, b and Grasshopper engine, the John Quincy Adams. Now this was uh, an incredible um, machine in, in engineering and use. It was used mostly as a switcher engine, but when it was built in 1835, and if you think about that, I mean, that's a quarter century before the Civil War. So this is the very beginnings of steam locomotives. Here it's running, and if you can imagine, you know, smoke pouring out of the top and steam coming out the sides and stuff, this thing, crawling across a field. Uh, everybody that had never seen one said, wow, it looks like a huge iron grasshopper crawling or walking across uh, the field uh, along the rail. Right next to it is something a little newer, and that is 1903. This is our summer trolley, which means that it's, it's open air. We go up to it. You uh, hop on and pick your seat, and these seats are all, they, they, can, they can flip either way when you get the end of the line get to the end of the, uh, the trolley line, uh, you just flip all the seats and drive it the other direction. So if you were in town, um, 
downtown wanting to go from one block to the next, you could hop on one of these summer trolleys. Now, if you were going to go across country, meaning not just to Richmond, Indiana, but all the way to Kansas City, Kansas, or all the way out to San Francisco or something, you would want to take uh, a luxury coach. And we have one of those in the transportation center here. This is a Barney and Smith built um, coach. It's, it's, a, it's a luxury uh, cross country coach. This was built right here in Dayton, Ohio. And let's go inside. So this is a, a luxury coach, mohair seats, stained glass, uh, inlaid mahogany. If you look at this, look at that. You can see too that we have both electric lights and globes for uh, gas lights. If we walk through here, you can see just how gorgeous this car is. And, and you can see these, these cars even had their own, their own restrooms. In the back here was a, a, separate, a separate room. One I wanted to show you too is our caboose. So now this was for cross country travel. So this really goes with the Barney and Smith car, but it is our uh, caboose. And uh, this would have been used, it was, it was used all the way up until the, the, uh, <clears throat> the 70s, the 1970s. But a caboose like this is where uh, the brake, brakeman and the, uh, the, the freight uh, conductor would, would spend their time and could rest. There are uh, cabinets here for their belongings and clothes. There are uh, benches back here where they can take a nap and sleep at night very hard. Here's, here's, a, here's a friend, he's keeping a watch. Um, they have benches up here, chairs up here to look out um, for reasons that the train might, you know, the brakes would need to be applied or if there was a fire or something. Um, so they were really taking care of everybody on the train, make sure they were safe and, and the, the, the trip went as it should. And then we have in here uh, the back area, area where they could, they have fresh drinking water, they have a little stove to cook on, again, a sink, um, you know, a little, little place to, to eat. So, uh, <laughs> so it really was their, their home away from home uh, on, on, the back of the, on the back of the train. We uh, hope you're having a good time and we hope uh, you'll visit Carillon Historical Park soon. So uh, take care and enjoy your day. Bye-bye. That was really cool. I didn't know there were so many different kinds of trains. I guess before cars, they use trains for about everything. Hey, GT, I've got one for you. What do you call a train that is loaded with bubble gum? I don't know. A choo-choo train. <laughs> yeah, they choo-choo. Hey, I have one. How do trains hear what you're saying? Through their engineers. Get it? <laughs> You know what I've always wanted to do? I've always wanted to go somewhere in a hot air balloon. Me too. They aren't the most reliable form of transportation, but it would be an amazing experience. That's why I've asked Mr. C, who is a local science educator, to take us up in a hot air balloon and show us how it works. All right, so we're here at Gentle Breeze Hot Air Ballooning in Lebanon, Ohio. We're actually gonna be going up in the air here in a bit. I cannot wait to explore air from way up there. And I'm with Mark Weissman, who is going to be my pilot in the hot air balloon. Mark, how are you today? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm a little nervous, but talk to me about a hard, hot air balloon. How does it actually work? As you can see behind us, there's a basket, and then there's the balloon, which is called the envelope, and we are going to fill it up with cold air. This is so cool. All that air is filling up this balloon. And once that cold air fills the balloon up, we will heat it up, heat that air up, and that's what causes it to rise. We are in a balloon that's 69,000 cubic feet. So to get a perspective, if you were to turn it upside down, you could fit 69,000 basketballs in it. So we're actually up in the air flying. Every time we want to raise and go higher in this balloon, we give the burner a pull. So we've been flying for about half an hour and we're coming in for a landing here. And we are literally scraping 
the dirt intentionally. We're just super low to the ground. This is so amazing to be able to fly, to make adjustments with a pull of a pull of a lever to heat up more air and create lift and cause that air to become less dense than the surrounding air. It just, it's, it's amazing. We're coming in for a landing. We're gonna bounce a couple times. Oh. Yeah, no, we got there. it. We got it. Yeah, We're right. on the ground. We just landed. When you're in a hot air balloon, you don't get to land wherever you want to land. You land where the wind takes you, and the neighbors get to join in the festivities. Hey guys, I think it's about time we get back to the library. Yeah, let's go. Miss Winnie has a great book for us to read. Here we go. It's a short trip back. Here we are. Nice job, Sky Drone. Hi, JT. Hi, friends. Welcome back. I'm sure you had a wonderful time on your field trip. So what I want you to do now, sit down, relax, and listen to my story today. The story today is those Magnificent Sheep in Their Flying Machine. Written by Peter Bentley, illustrated by David Roberts. The sheep on the hillside were munching away, much as they always did day after day, when suddenly something went zoom overhead. Let's go and see what it is. They all said. So Lambert and Eunice and Marty and Mabs and old Uncle Ransbottom, Bart, Ben and Babs, skipped to the hilltop and saw down below dozens of aeroplanes all in a row. There were men with mustaches and goggles and spats and ladies in splendidly colorful hats and jolly brass bands playing Palm Dilla D. An air race, an air race, the lambs cried with glee. A bright yellow airplane stood nearby. How spiffing, said Eunice, to fly in the sky. No one will mind if we have a quick peep. So one by one, onto the plane jumped the sheep. Oh dear, muttered Mabs, it's a bit of a squeeze, but there's just enough room if you tuck in your knees. Move up, Ben, said Eunice, but Ben couldn't budge. So old Uncle Ransbottom gave him a nudge, which made him bump Lambert, who bumped into Babs, who banged into Marty, who bashed into Mabs, who beat it, oh bother, and biffed against Bart who butted a little green button, marked start. The engine went chuckity, chuckity, cough. And old Uncle Ransbottom cried, let me off. But the plane quickly started to trundle downhill. And faster and faster it trundled until old Uncle Ransbottom, Bart, Ben, and Babs, and Lambert, and Eunice, and Marty, and Mabs, caused all the people to gasp and to stare as the bright yellow aeroplane took to the air. I say, cried a gent with a civil top cane, some thieves in white sweaters are taking my plane. Ah, oh, cried the sheep as they swerved and they swooped. Ooh, they all groaned as the plane looped de loop they did a steep nosedive and rolled a few rows. Then old Uncle Ransbottom grabbed the controls. Way hey, he exclaimed, what a lark, what a thrill. This beats eating grass on a boring old hill. The world is our oyster, he cried out in glee. Let's see a few sights. And they all cried, yippee! They can can in France and flamingoed in Spain till a furious bull chased them back 
to the plane. They flew over Egypt with rumbling tummies, so they stopped for a picnic and woke up some mummies. In Tibet, little Ben found a mound of spaghetti. He chomped a great mouthful. Run! It's a yeti! And old Maharaji sat stroking his belly and said, come for lunch at my palace in Delhi. But they soon scuttled back to the plane in a hurry when they asked what's to eat and he said, mutton curry. They sat on a log in a Florida swamp. But the log in the swamp wanted something to chop. Where next, said old Ransbottom. Minsk, Timbuktu, Saskatchewan, Zanzibar, Kalamazoo? What about Chile or China or Rome? But the other sheep all shook their heads and said, home. We missed the old field. We, we missed the old hill. We missed chewing grass and we missed standing still. Travel is fun. Every person should try it. But there's no place like home if you want peace and quiet. A little while later, the chap with the cane looked up and cried, gosh, it's so steez with my plane. He ran to the field and he leapt over the gate. He stared all around and sighed, bother, too late. For there was the bright yellow flying machine. But the thieves in the white sweaters were not to be seen. They were only some sheep who were munching away, just as they always did, day after day. Those magnificent sheep in their flying machine. Thanks for coming and listening to my story today. Can you imagine your story? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, Miss Winnie. So, what do you guys think about the book? I thought it was hilarious, especially that they thought that the plane was stolen by people in white sweaters. I loved it. I love how the sheep got to travel all around the world, but they were happy to come back home. So, if you had a yellow plane that you could hop in and go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Well, I would want to go to Mexico. I would love to go see all of the beautiful mountains, beaches, and deserts. And it'd be amazing to go and visit the ancient Aztec ruins. Here's a book that I've been reading all about Mexico and all of its contents. Me, if I had a yellow airplane that could take me anywhere I would like to go, it would be back to Dubai in the Middle East. My parents took me there a couple years back and the architecture is amazing. They have an indoor ski slope in the middle of the desert and the tallest building in the world. That is so cool. I would love to visit all those places, but if I could go anywhere, I would go to Paris. Well, it's kind of hard to travel right now and we're all staying safe at home, but a great thing is that we can read all about these places and go there in our imagination. Where would you want to go? Maybe it could be something you thought of in your imagination. Like I love to think about castles with unicorns in them. So I drew this picture. Or you can even write a story about it. We would love to see them and we will post our favorite ones. Riley, that's a great idea. You know, one really cool thing about going to places in your imagination is you can go however you like. I like planes and I like trains, but I also like really cool cars. Hey, Shaveen, then you're going to love this. It's a way we can make race cars at home. Take a look.
cool. I'll make someone my little sister, and maybe we can have a race. Hey guys, we're coming to the end of our camp today, but we do have time for a song, and our music counselor, Mr. Mark, knows a ton of great songs. Why don't you sing along with us? Hey kids, it's Mr. Mark again. I hope you're having a good day at camp. Uh, we're going to sing another song. This time I've got the banjo out instead of the guitar, which is fun. We're going to do a song called She'll Be Coming Round the Mountain. today. Remember to keep on reading, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye! To stream this episode or to find out more activities and books to read, visit thinktv.org slash camp. Hey guys, I got one for you. What happens when you wear a watch on an airplane? I don't know. Time flies. <laughs>